So, this is the opening that's going to be the doorway. Well, this is the soon-to-be opening that's going to be the doorway to enter into the dome. So what I've started with was drilling a hole so that I could stick this piece of rebar in and push the air form away from the wall. Now I did put a small hole in it, but that's repairable with a piece of tieback tape. I can hear it unpeeling from the wall. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a small window here so that I could push with my hand and make a bigger opening afterwards. Here is the tie back, peeling away. Walls look pretty smooth. Here's the thickness. Got a little more than a quarter. And this part of the wall we left thin on purpose because this is going to be the doorway. The rest of the wall is at least twice as thick as that. Okay, we are inside the dome. I have one spot there. That's there because at the top of the dome, the air was escaping. So when the cement was put on top, the air just made a hole through the cement. So I had a feeling that it might be there. So it's just simply gonna patch that up from the inside and put an extra layer of cement on top. But right now, I'm peeling the air form away from the dome. Let's see, we got some really nice smooth walls. So I'm just walking around, I'm just walking around the perimeter uh, to peel this away from the wall.
I just made an opening into the dome. So here I'm just removing the wood frame that I made out of 2x4 and uh, planks off of a pallet. Um, and I made that frame uh, to hold the wood I have on the side and that melamine board up top. I did intend for it to be more of an arch shape but uh, that's what I got and um, it worked out pretty good still. Also um, you can see their cardboard on the bottom uh, where I didn't have plywood I just used cardboard as a backer so that I could spray the cement and um, it would have something to hit against the backing So uh, I drew a um, kind of a, I drew an arch, and I'm trying to cut that out. And um, I did use the uh, uh, I did use I was using the reciprocating saw, but <clears throat> the saw blade got dull and wasn't able to handle all the cement. There was some spots that were a little thinner than others so it was easier to cut through the thin spots here's that cardboard I was talking about that I used as they as a backing so there's the opening here is the inside of the dome from against the wall on the opposite side of the door opening uh, surprisingly the dome is really big feeling on the inside it's a 16 foot diameter 200 square feet so here I'm putting these three inch screws and um, the purpose of these screws is so I know for the next layers that I'm going to be applying uh, I know the thickness I'm going for <laughs> and I'm putting that screw in about a quarter inch of the way so I'm going for two and three quarters of an inch of the insulation layer on top of this structural layer that we're looking at now so it's just me putting more of these screws uh, around the dome so I can use it as a gauge to tell me how thick the material is going on <clears throat> originally I planned to do six inch thick walls um, well six inch of insulation uh, I have about an inch of that structural layer that we're looking at here and I was gonna put six inches of insulation layer on top of this uh, but I chose to um, I chose to uh, stick with three inches uh, because on the inside I'm also going to be using uh, a special paint. Here's the neighbor's dog. He decided to wander around and sniff a couple of things. Okay, so here. I'm on top of the dome uh, and I'm using rapid set cement with a fiberglass mesh and I'm just reinforcing this top part of the dome this is where from the inside we could see the opening so I use the rapid set because it cured so quickly and it's uh, super strong Rinse your tools out right away when using that cement. So here I was uh, starting to spray the insulative layer on. And I got a lot of liquid out. And um, it was due to uh, the pump not being able to handle the insulative mix. The correct pump I was going to be using for this job was that Bowie pump it has these two gears on the inside that spin and it works really good for this epic material 
but since the seals on it uh, went bad I wasn't able to use a pump so the rest of the exterior of this dome I'm going to be applying by hand and um, you'll see coming up I, I take big handfuls of the epic material and I slop it on at about three and a half three to three and a half inches thick in a lot of places here you see me laying it up by hand and then troweling it smooth Just mixing up another batch of air, uh, epic. And with these batches, I'm going for a certain consistency that allows me to lay it up by hand. When I was spraying it, um, I had a looser consistency so that it would spray pump through the pump and spray with no problem here it's a much thicker consistency so I can plop it on and you can see there it's about two and a half to three inches thick that layer on top And uh, honestly, if you had the correct ladder, uh, and that would be a ladder that curved, and um, you had a center post in the center of the dome that the ladder could rest against, you could literally build this entire dome by hand, mixing cement and troweling it on. Um, you don't need any sprayers or pumps or anything like that to do this job of course that makes it way easier but uh, with these air forms um, and using uh, either rebar or basalt mesh or, or even a fiberglass mesh it's going to uh, allow the cement to bond to it a lot easier so um, this process with building a dome can be completely done by hand. As you see me finishing it off by hand. So with this first insulative layer that I'm applying, I was going for the very uh, top of the dome and later I do the sides.
carry this heavy ass bucket of cement over here. Those stone has subscribed to the YouTube channel.